All right, in this video, I just finished the timing on this 4.6. I wanted to take a minute to talk about some of the ins and some of the outs. This isn't a how to set the timing video. Uh, if you want to see a video on how to set the timing on this thing, I'll put the link uh, up over here. Uh, but this video, I'm just going to talk about some of the items that are available on the timing kits for 4.6, uh, whether that's a two valve, a three valve, or an engine like this, a four valve. Okay, I will start out also by saying that some of the stuff is my opinion. My opinion is based on my experiences. If you don't agree with the stuff that I'm saying, feel free to add some comments down below. I'd like to hear what others are doing, uh, what other uh, opinions are on it. Like I said, this is just my opinions based on my experience. There's lots of stuff available for this entire timing set. You could, there's aftermarket stuff for, for all of this. There's factory uh, style replacement stuff. Uh, but the big question you gotta ask is, do I really need it? Do I really need to put uh, billet tensioners on there, billet guides, billet uh, pivot arms? And maybe you do, depending on what you're gonna be doing with this engine or how long you want it to last for, maybe you do need to. But remember, there are engines like this, these four valves and two valves and three valves that have uh, my Marauder, which has a four valve, has uh, 200 and something thousand miles on it. So if you're rebuilding one of these engines, the factory style uh, tensioner stuff or factory style timing equipment is expected could possibly last up to 200,000 miles. Uh, so it depends on what you're gonna be doing with the engine. There are companies out there that make complete kits. Ford Performance makes a complete kit. Uh, this is mostly Cloys. If, if Ford Performance isn't available, uh, I really I really like Cloys. They make quality stuff. I've compared some of the Cloys stuff with the factory Ford stuff, and they look some of the stuff looks almost identical, like it was made by the same manufacturer. At a minimum, if you're only going to upgrade one thing, it's these metal tensioners. These metal tensioners can be used on two, four, and three valve engines on the 4.6 and the 5.4. Uh, a, a lot of the later four valves and three valves had a plastic tensioner. I've seen them break and then they lose tension and jump timing and all kinds of bad stuff can happen then. So at a minimum, I recommend you go to the metal tensioners. Now they do make billet ten tensioners and those are really nice. You can also modify these tensioners. Uh, they make a billet uh, pivot arm, they make billet guides. And some of that is useful, especially if you're gonna be running that engine on a two-step or a rev limiter where you're gonna be bouncing off the rev limiter and you're gonna be seeing a lot of fluctuation in the tension on this thing. That allows it to move in and out a little better. But if you're not gonna be on a two-step and you don't plan on just bouncing off the rev limiter all the time, then the factory stuff is probably gonna be okay. All right, so let's start at the bottom. The bottom sprocket, I highly recommend a one-piece sprocket. Some of the earlier 4.6 engines had a two-piece sprocket. Uh, and if you're gonna run the one-piece, you gotta make sure that you run the thinner reluctor wheel for the, the crank position sensor. Uh, and don't forget to put that on before you put your timing chain on or else the engine, it won't even start. It'll crank, but it won't start. If you are gonna use a two-piece one, like the, the adjustable two-piece two to dial in the camshaft, um, uh, I've seen a lot of people will drill a hole in it and put a, a pin in there to try and help keep those two to stay together. Uh, but me personally, I don't like adjusting the cams down here with the with the two piece one, and I don't like using the two piece one, so I use uh, a one piece one. Moving up uh, again, these are the Cloys tensioners. This is a Ford uh, factory Ford primary chain. Uh, a lot of them look very similar, but uh, the Ford. Factory Ford one probably has the best reputation. Uh, these tensioners, like I said, are cloys. The secondary tensioners up here, they, they make a flipped one for on this side. The idea behind that is the, the tension side uh, is this on this factory one, the tension side has a plunger on there. So they flip that around so the plunger's on the top, keeping the tension side from, from basically going in and out and that keeps any fluctuations between your two camshafts on your passenger side uh, from creating any kind of dangerous situations for piston to valve contact or any kind of loss of power or anything like that. Another common upgrade that I'll do up here is I at least put ARP fasteners on there, like ARP fasteners. 
they are reusable. I, I have seen people just uh, retorque the factory ones. They are torqued to yield, but uh, people will put them at like maybe 100 foot pounds, something like that, just to make sure that they stay on there. Also up here, there's little uh, spacers that go behind the two intake. Uh, the washer right back here, there's a spacer back there. And I've gotten aftermarket spacers to put in there and they weren't long enough. So they didn't, they didn't really squish down on the, the cam sprocket. So be careful if you're going to be using uh, those spacers up here. The factory ones, in my opinion, are perfectly fine. Also adjustable primary sprockets. There's a few manufacturers out there that make adjustable primary sprockets. And I've used comp cams and they work really well. Uh, but I also had a customer bring in a, an aftermarket one. I can't remember the brand of it, but the dot didn't even line up to where it was supposed to line up. And when I put them on there, I, I was trying to degree the cams or something. I was getting a lot of, I was getting pissed in the valve contact right off the bat. And I was like, this shouldn't happen. So I pulled that off and I compared it to the factory one to see where the dot was. The dot was three teeth off. Uh, so just be careful on them. I've also heard of other ones coming apart. But uh, the, the comp cams are pretty good. Like I haven't heard really anything bad about the comp cam one. The current comp cam ones, again, this is 2025. They might have some new stuff by the time you're looking at this. Um, but if you're gonna degree your cams, you can also grind them out and uh, get some adjustability that way to move your cams around. So these secondary chains that are on here, these are made by AccuFab as well. The customer brought me these to put on there. He's a little concerned that uh, they, the factory style ones might break. And I compare these to uh, the factory style ones and they do look a little thicker than the factory ones. Uh, they definitely seem thick, thicker than some of the, uh, just the, the stock style replacement ones. So these are uh, AccuFab ones. I'll put the part number down below. Also try and find the part number and put it down below for the uh, uh, Wonder Racing secondary tensioners that are on here. So another piece that I missed is down here is these little pivot pins on the on the aluminum block engines. They're threaded in there and, and that thread size is only eight millimeter. These have Cobra engine engineering pivot pins. These pivot pins are uh, really nice. And uh, what they do is you drill it out and then tap it to uh, 12 millimeter and uh, they're much more stronger. OK, lastly, a question I get a lot of, a lot of times and I see it online, too, is do I need to degree my camshafts? Uh, factory ones, no, you don't need to. You just need to set all the timing marks and it, it's gonna be fine. Aftermarket ones, I would say if you have the means to do it, then do it. If not, then do your best to make sure you don't have any piston to valve contact. Try to pump up those uh, lash adjusters and rotate the engine around. Make sure that it's not gonna hit any valves or anything like that. If you can take uh, one of the springs out and just move uh, move that valve up and down to see how much it's moving and hopefully you have uh, enough clearance for it, that would be at a minimum uh, that I recommend. But let's say you put cams in there and you don't degree them. Really what happens is if the cams are not degreed where they're uh, designed for, it's going to just shift the peak power that it makes. It's going to shift it either up or down anywhere from 500 to 1,000 RPMs, or maybe less, maybe only a couple hundred, depending on if it's only like a degree off, it might only shift the, the power curve 200 uh, or so RPM. So I don't think that it's as vital as what everybody says, unless you're really trying to dial in your engine as much as possible. But again, uh, I my recommendation is if, if you have the means to do it, then do it, you know, uh, borrow a cam degree kit, Really, it's not that difficult. You get a degree wheel. Uh, you just got to have some uh, some other tools on the top to uh, to get the actual measurement. It's not it's not that difficult. I'll put a link up here if you want to see it. So, in closing, there is a lot of stuff that manufacturers make out there for these engines. But just because somebody makes it doesn't mean you need to put it on. Even if maybe you have a low mileage engine and you're just uh, wanting to look it over, if the pivot arms and the guides look good, then reuse them. If the gaskets look good, then reuse them. If your gaskets are flattened out, then yeah, replace them. If your pivot arms are, are uh, you know, old and brittle and discolored and 
uh, have grooves through them and all this other stuff and you, and you know you have the money to buy them that that would be i would get your 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 pivot arm your guide and a metal tensioner at a minimum uh but everything else inspect everything else and see how it is but just because they make real fancy uh aftermarket stuff for all of this doesn't mean that you have to buy it so thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions or comments uh, make sure you put them down below and uh, make sure you subscribe to see more videos on mustangs and engine building